All right. One, two, three. This is my Bible. It is Yah's Word. It is the inspired, infallible Word of Yah. It is a lamp unto my feet. Blessed are those who hear the Word of Yah and keep it. I find out who I am in the pages contained herein. This is my Bible. Still technically the morning, so good morning, everyone. How are you all doing today? Doing well. Thank you for asking. Glad to hear you guys are doing well. I'm uh, going to start off with the cliche pastor message of will not be before you long. I think this is actually be true this time, though. We'll see. Today's message will be titled. Oh, let's turn on the mouse here. Today's message will be titled Surrender. Surrendering is one of the bravest and wisest things that we can do. When we think about surrendering, we only think about the act of actually surrendering. We don't think about what can come to us after surrendering. When we think about that term, we always think about just the act of giving up. We, we equate surrendering as giving up. But nobody thinks with the forefront of what can happen, happen after we surrender. Because surrendering is not just a one-time act that has a ripple effect. Surrendering is a vital aspect in Scripture. So I want us to look at Scripture for the instructions, because that's what our Bible is. It is an instruction manual on how to live life. Then, after we look at Scriptures, we're going to look at an example of nature, about how surrendering is important. And then we are going to look at a story from history for more, ta for more tangible examples. And that is not for me to say that the Bible is not tangible. It is more tangible than anything else. Yeah. But just like when Jesus was teaching or when others were teaching, they would use examples around them. When the Messiah said, you can throw this mountain into a, to the ocean, he wasn't quoting the Torah or the letters of the prophets when he said that. He was using an example of that people could see. When he talked about the farmer, when he talked about the prodigal son, these were not examples from scripture. These were stories from history, correct? Correct. After this, my goal and the goal that it was given to me is that you will understand how important surrendering actually is. So the first example that we're going to talk about today is surrendering our reputations. We put a lot of stock in our reputations, and rightfully so, I think that it is good to have a, a high and good reputation. I think that it's something that we should take pride in. But in Scripture, in, in the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 4 through 8, it talks about how we need to surrender that. So let's go there. And now this is Paul speaking to the church in Philippi. Though I myself have reasons for such confidence. If someone else think they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for righteousness based on the law, faultless. This is Paul talking about himself. Verse 7. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my master, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. So Paul is saying, yo, I'm a really big deal. <laughs> I am that guy. We put the, the, these people put so much stock into being the chosen people of the Most High. Put so much stock into being Hebrews. He said, I'm a Hebrews Hebrew. I am the example. You all should be, aspire to be like how I live. But then what did he say? All of that, though, is garbage. Me being the best of the best is garbage compared to being loved by the Messiah. He says, everybody knows that since I was a baby, because he talks about how he was circumcised on the eighth day, which is a commandment in scripture, in the Torah. 
He said, ever since I was a baby, I've been following the law. He said, I'm him. But I surrendered them all to Christ so that I could gain him. The next form of surrender comes directly from our Messiah. Going to go to Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Christ said, give me your burden and I'll give you mine. He said his burdens are light, unlike ours. Who, who, who would love to trade those burdens with the Messiah? Because we, we have this picture of the Messiah as having all these problems and struggles. But he said himself, my burden is light. Are having some technical difficulties today? There we go. Sorry about that. The next thing that we are to surrender is our bodies. Let's look again at what Paul has to say. First Corinthians chapter 6, 18 through 20. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from Yah? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor Yah with your bodies. Key point here. You are not your own. You were purchased. Now I know that we don't like to hear that word, especially us coming from being descendants of, of slaves. We don't want to hear about being purchased. But what does Paul say? You were bought at a price. And it was a one-time transaction. Everything that we do, now everybody loves to quote this scripture just in referencing the sexual immorality, and usually when we're bashing homosexuals, but you see here, it doesn't say anything about homosexuals in there. It says all sexual immorality, right? I didn't make that up or anything. Okay. Everything that we are doing, we are su supposed to be honoring the most high with. When you are at school, you're supposed to be honoring the most high. When you are at work, you are supposed to be honoring the most high. When you were working in your garden, you were supposed to be honoring the Most High. Everything that we do, we have to surrender. We're to surrender ourselves to Him because ourselves were purchased at a price. He didn't purchase us at a price for us to be, as, as Pastor Sheryl likes to say, broken, bust down, beaten, and disgusted. <laughs> That's not why He purchased us, is it not? He didn't purchase us for us to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. Everything that we do, we have to surrender. So scripture constantly talks about surrendering. But the question is, are you surrendering your life to the most high? So let's look at an example in, in nature. When we surrender... We lose things. There's no surrendering that happens without the sacrifice or loss of something else. Right? Like at the very least, you're sacrificing your will. You're sacrificing your freedom. You're sacrificing something. So when we surrender, we lose things. When we surrender, we might lose our jobs. We might lose our health. We might lose our wealth. We might lose our loved ones. But losing things, this is a secret here. I'm here to tell you losing things is okay. Losing things is sometimes beautiful. There's this saying that I, I took to earlier in the early 2000s was about how struggle 
can be beautiful. It's the beautiful struggle, if you would say. <laughs> Nature shows us every year how beautiful it is to lose things. Every round September, October, November, everybody loves to look outside. I'm always driving, so I don't get to see Nick route and look. I got to look, pay attention to the road. But my main passenger all these times will say, look at these trees. They're so beautiful. I'm like, well, I got to look at the traffic. I don't get to look at the trees. In fall, in autumn, the trees let go of their leaves. The reason why, for you that didn't pay attention in science class in elementary or middle school, the reason why trees let go of their leaves is because their roots, they know it is going to be a tough season approaching. What's that tough season? Winter. 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 And living in Michigan, winter is tough. Some of us may be approaching a tough season. Some of us may be in that season. And some of us might just be coming out of that rough season. The thing that the tree knows that we sometimes know, which we could learn an example from, the tree knows that it can afford to use its resources by protecting its leaves during this, by leaving them. Like we don't, we, we don't have to feed these leaves. We can let these go so that we can stay alive. Because if I hang on to these leaves, I might not make it through the winter. I might not make it through the tough season if I hang on to these leaves. I have to continue to feed them. What is that saying? Don't give out of your uh, resource, but give it out of your plenty. So the tree decides to let the leaves go. In your life, let go of those leaves. Surrender those leaves that you don't have the resources to take care of anymore. Now, I don't want none of y'all parents say, oh, I gotta let go of these kids. I can't take care of them. <laughs> Pastor said, let me just throw this child away. <laughs> they suck it up all, eat all the food. Now, I can speak, I can testify on kids eating up all your food. Amen. It's so interesting. Kids don't, and I must, this must be a reap what you sow thing, so I know my parents will love this story. But it's so interesting. This is not in my notes, so whatever. But it's so interesting that when you ask your children things that they want from the grocery store or snacks they want or dinner they want, they never suggest anything. When you go and get something that you like just for yourself that no one's ever shown ever. a desire in consuming. Ever. When you get that and you come home and you're like, I worked a long day. I deserve to have the thing I purchased for myself. And you go in the cupboard, or you go in the refrigerator, or you go in the freezer, and it is nowhere to be found. <laughs> and you're like, you don't even like this. But just like the popular videos out right now, other people make food look way, look way better than what it is before. <laughs> Nobody ever asked for fill in the blank before. Once they see you eat it, oh, that's, that's the creme de la creme right there. Gotta have it. God, I, I need it. <laughs> and I also have to eat all of it. <laughs> Pastor Cheryl, my wife had asked Pastor Cheryl for her communion juice to, to take at home. So when I come home, I go because I go to basketball afterwards. Or no, I came from work. I went to work. And I came home, half of the juice was gone. And I said, How much communion did you take? Same day. She gave it to me. Same day. But she never even took it. <laughs> Even the child out of the mouth of babes. <laughs> no one ever, she, the person never has requested grape juice before. But when it's there, when it's not theirs, oh, gotta, gotta it. have it all. Halfway gone in two hours. But again, we read what we sow. I'm pretty sure that if my parents wanted to come up and testify, they could come up with all the things that were eaten and consumed. That uh, they never got a taste of. No, of course. Yeah, yeah. You can taste the fire. <laughs> 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 no but surrender those leaves that you don't have the resources to take care of anymore. During the winter, during that tough season, so you can keep up with that metaphor, 
the tree roots go deeper into the soil and they aren't wasteful of the food and resources that they have so that they can get through through the tough time. The Most High has given us resources, has given us an instruction manual that we can rely on during our spiritual winters. So even nature shows how imperative it is to surrender. So not only scripture shows it, nature shows it. And the great thing about nature is that it is always in line with the creation of the Most High. I don't have this in my notes either. There's a uh, story that in, in, the, in the garden during their judgment, and the Most High said to the serpent that the descendant will crush his head. Now what creature is described leading the temptation in, in, in the garden? A serpent. And what animal is the Messiah referenced as? The lion. So even the stars in the sky, and this is not astronomy, this is astrology, because one is, well, one is fact. <laughs> even the stars in the sky, when you look at the constellations, where there's a constellation of a lion, literally right under his paw print, his paw, is the constellation of a snake. So even the stars line up with the nature, the creation of the Most High. You can Google that if you don't believe me. I do. I did have a picture of it before, but again, this wasn't in my notes. So we have scripture that talks to, about, to us about how important surrender is. We have nature which shows us how beautiful surrender can be. Let's look at a story in history. Now, I will try to make this as entertaining as possible, but you know who my father is. So I get my love of history from. It's genetic. To skip some of the siblings. <laughs> but this is a very important lesson that should be taught in schools. But you know, now in the climate we are today, people don't like history taught in schools anymore. So during World War II, America was an inactive contributor. Meaning that we would send money and weapons to the allies, quote unquote, but no troops. Like we're not getting our hands or we'll pay for it. We'll make, we'll send you some supplies, but we're not going to put our lives on the, on the, on the line. <laughs> yeah. But there was one event that occurred that is quoted a day that will live forever in infamy, infamy, the attack on Pearl Harbor, because you can't play you can't be neutral on the sideline rooting for somebody. Because right. the other team's not going to take that lightly. You can't say, yeah, get them, get them. Because when that person is, is done fighting them, they're like, hey, you said something too. <laughs> Fast forward. After this attack, and America is in, the, is in the war in Europe and with Japan. So eventually, America does something very drastic in Japan, in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They dropped two atomic bombs in Japan. Now, the interesting thing about this is, there's a few interesting things about this. One, they sent pamphlets warning them, like, hey, we're about to drop a big giant bomb on you, which I don't think you should do in, in, in war. Like, stood me, like, I, like, we have a current war in the world going on today, and they keep saying, they're on trial for war crimes. They get something bad. I'm like, what's war? How is there war crimes? Like, you're supposed to kill the other person. Like, that's what we agreed upon. Right. Where, where are these rules come from? We get mad at other countries for using tear gas and mustard gas and things like that. But in America, we use those same things on our citizens when they're peaceful protesting. But that's another sermon. The other interesting thing about us dropping these atomic bombs is that we didn't have any more. We used our supply. We emptied the clip. But the thing is, Japan didn't know that. So Japan surrendered. And there was also the firebombing in Tokyo, which killed more people than both of these bombs. But that's, a, again, another story. So Japan surrendered. So who was the leader of Japan? What is their title? Does anyone know? Emperor. emperor. So the emperor had to surrender. 
in their culture, because this is very important, the emperor is God to them. He's not just, he's not Hitler, he's not a dictator, he's not a president, he's not duly elected. This is the figurehead for them. Like, we are the most high to my people. So for some people, their first time hearing the emperor's voice was to surrender. They never heard his voice. The first time they hear his voice, and yeah, we, we, we lost this one, guys. We couldn't hang. We didn't get no atomic bombs. We didn't get that. We didn't get that Lord, but we didn't get put that cheat code in. The emperor even had to overcome a military coup so that he could surrender. The military was like, we didn't surrender to them. We're the best. Nobody can hang with us. We're Japan. And we got this little nice cute picture of what Japan is now. They wasn't always like that. They were the ruthless of all of them. They, like There's this saying that China had in the feudal times. They said, China is an elephant. Japan is an insect, but it's a poisonous insect that can kill us if we're asleep. That's how powerful their number one enemy at the time viewed them. Like, we're, we have way more people, but y'all are dirty. <laughs> the military wanted to remove God because God, lowercase g, for y'all trying to get on me, the military wanted to remove God because God wanted to surrender. But we have friends that will try to tell us to hold on in a losing battle right. instead of surrendering, right. instead of removing ourselves or removing other people. Girl, just stay with them. You know you love them. <laughs> yeah, he beat you upside the head a few times and knocked you unconscious. You know, he just loves you real tough. He's very passionate. Okay. Gonna love you to death one day. Sometimes it don't even have to be our friends. Sometimes our conscience wants us to stay in a losing battle. That voice in our head is like, dude, you just need to stay a little longer. Just keep on keeping on. We don't give up. That's, that's not what men do. They tell you that you're dumb for walking away from your losing battle. But the, the story is beautiful about Japan. Because the Japanese, they regrouped. And they had to go through a season of being bare. They had to go through a tough winter, metaphorically, where they didn't have all the beautiful things that they had. They didn't have the wonderful army and navy that they had. They had to give it all away. They had to give up all of their leaves. But they came back stronger. They surrendered to America, and which led them having to go bare because when you sign treaties after wars, you got to give up some stuff. You don't just get to surrender and go back to things as normal. They lost a lot. Yeah. It's okay. I'm talking to somebody specifically. I don't know who. It's okay to go through a season bare. Mm -hmm. It's okay to not have your beautiful leaves on you. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be quote unquote ugly for a season. Because what comes after winter? Spring. Spring. Everybody's the majority, most people's favorite season. The most beautiful time of year. But well, April showers bring May flowers, right? Now in Michigan, that don't really be true because we haven't snow in May, but you know. Now I doubt that saying came out in, in Michigan. Now, well, even though the Temptations had the song, I got the month of May, but uh, maybe it was because of the climate change, it was a lot hotter back then. <laughs> it's okay to go through that season bare. Because you are going to come back so much stronger. Let's continue with this historical example. Japan, after the war, stopped focusing on their military spending because the Americans and the other allies said, y'all can't do that no more. Y'all don't got no military. So Japan, because they couldn't spend money on the military, for example, America spends more than half of its money on the military. Since Japan couldn't spend their money on the military anymore, they said, let's invest in our people since we can't invest in military spending. Let's pour into our people. We need to stop spending so much time on fighting 
and focus on ourselves. Because Japan was spending so much money on fighting that they weren't focusing on their people. Focus on yourself. Focus on your family. Surrender from fighting and invest in yourself. Because after this, Japan evolved. America, because this is what happens when you surrender. Other countries get to dictate what happens. America gave Japan $2.2 billion after the war was over. And said, this is to rebuild your country. And Japan used that money to invest in their people. Invest in infrastructure. And this is 1945, to give you a reference of two point. Two billion dollars, and I'll do a correlation of what that is in today money in a moment. <laughs> so Japan lost everything, surrendered, and then focused on itself instead of everyone else. Again, something else that we can learn. To now, so we fast forward from 1945 to 2023. The United States is indebted to Japan. 1.1 trillion dollars trillion with a t so we gave them 2.2 billion dollars to fix themselves and now we owe them 1.1 trillion dollars you know how people talk about how much it is from a million to a billion it's even bigger gap from a billion to a trillion we don't even have a comprehension for what trillion dollars is yeah. People always talk about how much China, how much America owes China, but we actually owe Japan more than China. Because we owe China approximately $850 billion. Wow. And I looked up that inflation rate for $2.2 billion in 1945 to today's money. It is over $30 trillion. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> the kind of money that make you choke. <laughs> Don't you think America could use that $30 trillion now? <laughs> America was the lender and Japan was the borrower. Now Japan owns the largest share of America. Because America is a company. And we are owned mostly by Japan. And this is not an anti-American message. This is just facts. Things that you can look up yourself. But I did the work for you. you. Japan invested in their people and with education. They overly educated their people so that there can never be a man that rises again and says, I am God. We're going to go into wars we shouldn't be in. The same way that another people we were against in Germany, they overeducated their people so that no one can ever rise and say, let's just kill a bunch of people. Because we're the master race. But in America, we were like, oh, I don't talk about history. Oh, that may offend people. People might be offended because of the color of their skin. And you know who the well, most wealthiest, important country in Europe is? Hint, I said the name earlier. Germany, the other country we beat and invested in. Like people always call the president the uh, leader of the free world. Technically, most people say the, the chancellor of Germany actually has more power than, than the president of America. Because one for one, Germany has more friends than America. But again, we're getting a little bit too much bogged down in history. Just like the tree that releases during the fall and pushes through the winter, it never moves. That tree doesn't move and say, I got to get to a nicer spot. It's not like a bird that flies south for the winter. It stays in the same spot and pushes through. Correct? Just like the island of Japan. It has been bombed, impoverished, assisted, and flourished, yet it never moved. The same can and will be said about you. You are in the same spot, but not in the same position. It is time for you to surrender.
Thank you, Father, and a blessing to the reading of the word.